Hi, my name is Jamie with Chegg Tutors. Today I want to talk to you about the about vaporization, when a liquid turns into a gas. There are two kinds of vaporization. One is evaporation, when the temperature and the pressure of the liquid are below the vapor pressure above the liquid in the air, so that it only happens at the surface. Another is boiling, where the formation of bubbles happens within the liquid as well, below the surface of the liquid, and this is the more familiar phase transition. Either way, though, a liquid is turning into a gas. Here's a comparison of evaporation and of boiling. Evaporation is on the left. There are only molecules at the surface who are escape that are escaping the liquid. This might be because heat is added or because the pressure is low enough that the water that the water molecules will say it's water are escaping the surface. The bigger the surface area here, the faster the liquid is going to evaporate. We've experienced this when we spill something on the floor, it evaporates a lot faster the bigger the spill is, or when we have a dish or a cup of water and the cup evap the liquid in the cup evaporates faster the wider the cup is. And boiling, on the other hand, bubbles form beneath the surface as well because the pressure that's down here and the pressure can overcome the pressure that's up here, the vapor pressure in the air. Bubbles can form inside the liquid and rise for that reason. And again, often this happens when heat is added so that the molecules at the top are the quickest to escape. The molecules at the top are the ones that have the enough kinetic energy to escape the liquid and go into the air as a gas. Now this helps us make sense of the energetic changes that happen during boiling, where the fastest molecules, the ones with the most kinetic energy, are the ones that leave the liquid. This causes the temperature to go down, because temperature, as we know, is an average of kinetic energy. So the temperature of the remaining liquid goes down because its fastest molecules, the ones that had the most kinetic energy, have left and become vapor above the liquid. Now, a lot of things can affect how this process, either of vaporization, either of evaporation or of boiling, happens. This is why water has an abnormally high boiling point, because fundamentally, the heat that is added breaks the intermolecular bonds between the molecules in a liquid state. So if there's ionic bonding, it's very, very hard to vaporize anything because the ionic bonds are so strong. In the same way, in covalent bonding, you're unlikely to break the bonds of the, cov of the covalently bonded molecule. So evaporation or boiling is not the breaking up of the actual compound. It's a simple physical change from liquid to gas. We see this where in a polar molecule that doesn't have hydrogen bonding, dipole-dipole forces help hold the molecule together, but they're not as significant as the bonds between, the, the bonds not between molecules, but within the molecule itself. Hydrogen bonding, on the other hand, which water has, is going to cause a lot more energy needed to break the bonds. So in this case, since hydrogen bonding is much stronger, water has to gain a lot more kinetic energy before it can escape the liquid state. And so a lot more heat has to be added, meaning there's going to be a higher boiling point. This has been a very short introduction to vaporization, both evaporation and boiling. You want to think more about the energetic changes, and you can actually start to develop a quantitative picture of what's going on. Most important, though, especially early on, is probably to understand what is going on at the surface of a liquid when there is vaporization going on and what's left behind energetically, the lower energy molecules with less lower temperature. Thanks for listening, and see you next time.